That's me. I'm Ben Maddox. Uh, uh, I'll do some more introduction in a second, but when the first picture comes up, I'll start talking. So this is freshwater fish get like a bad photographic rap. Pretty much, you know, ocean fish, they filmed it every, we're going to go inside the belly of the shark and show you how it digests food. You know, or, or you've seen, but pretty much freshwater fish, it's a dude holding it. Like if you look, the, the vast majority of images of these fish. And so what I do is I try to make movies of fish. Here's, that's me there. Um, so I make a, a YouTube series and I make videos of fish only in Vermont. And I mostly just try to take movies. So some of these photographs are just stills from the movies and bad snapshots, you know. So there I'm looking for some brown trout, uh, you know, kind of in a pool. And there's me, and so, uh, uh, and I'll be done with me in just a minute. But anyway, so I just use like a, a cheap, I, I just do this for the hell of it, so I don't have any money. And I, uh, I just use like a Canon point and shoot with a waterproof case that takes 1080 HD video. And that crazy thing is built out of my kid's old training wheel parts, you know, it's kind of a, a tripod that sits on the bottom. So here's the first fish. Uh, this guy's that's the chain pickerel, and this is in the controversial Berlin Pond. I got to go there. I like to try to choose one controversial body of water in Vermont every year. Sometimes it's the asbestos mines, and whatever. But anyway, so this is, I went to this place, a really great place, really great features. Uh, so um, these are going faster than I went at home. Uh, so there's, there's the brown bullhead, and it's guarding a nest, and nests are awesome for seeing fish, for encountering fish while snorkeling. Uh, I don't scuba, and, uh, and because they will guard that nest no matter what, you know, and so they'll allow you to approach them. And some fish are really inquisitive and curious, but the bullhead is not. Uh, the world of minnows, some people just call them bait fish, which is really insulting to these fish that have had this 100,000-year-old community living in your river, you know, making a living and doing the thing. They're very fast. This is like in really fast water, so they're almost impossible to see, and they're super hard to identify, and there's a ton of species. There's a bunch of species. You're going to see this guy. If you go snorkeling in Vermont, you'll probably see one of these. They're very docile in the water. Their biggest defense is just to go to the bottom and stick to it. They're not going to bite you or anything. But on land, they're, they'll bite you. Um, let's see. Where the heck am I over here? Uh, oh, yeah. So, um, okay. So one of the biggest expenses is maintaining my army of space robots that allows me to see the Earth and find good places to go snorkeling. <laughs> But no, so, I, so here's Derby Cloak Island. Uh, but so I use, I use Google Maps to try to find good places to snorkel. You can see just on the, I guess the south end of this island, you can see the rocks under there. And that usually means that it's good because it's clear and you'll be able to see something. And this one, do, 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 do. That's the Jurassic Park theme. This, this is a fish that's like been around since the Jurassic age and it's swimming around Lake Champlain. And it's a really interesting fish. It's called the bowfin. And you can, it'll, it's curious, it'll run from you, but you can have an, an encounter with basically what's like a dinosaur mind. And it sees you uh, and you see it and it's really exciting. I don't really look for human junk on the bottom, but you know, I see stuff like that's a ship in Crystal Lake, Vermont. I mean, kind of the point of it is that I like going to a, a natural place that's totally alien to me. You know, like, I mean, now I've learned more about it. Uh, this guy, you're gonna see this fish all the time in Lake Champlain, the smallmouth bass. It's super uh, inquisitive. They'll always come up to you. They'll check you out. They also build nests, and the males will guard that nest. And you'll be amazed at the nest that these fish can build. Uh, and also a great fish that you can have an encounter with. It will, instead of like pulling it on a boat and jamming metal in its, out of its head, it'll just come right up to you and look at you in the face. And here's another awesome fish that's in Lake Champlain. It looks like he's about to make the biggest turd ever. <laughs> Um, that's the kind of discoveries I'm making out there. Uh, but this the freshwater drum, it used to be, it's similar, it's kind of like an ocean going fish, but it's in Champlain, very large, very cool. Um, you'll see these guys everywhere, you know, and if you take the time, you can snorkel in like one foot of water. Just don't touch the bottom because you'll get all the sediment up and you won't see anything. But you can hang out with these guys and right over them, you'll see that they have nests, weird communities and territories. And, you know, I'm not a scientist. Uh, and I wish I knew more. I try to look this up. Oh, so I also make DVDs and Blu-ray discs. I think the best way to watch the movies is on TV. And I do have some for sale. And it helps me to like pay for drugs and alcohol. Oh, or like, you know, snoo I have to repair my camera equipment and stuff like that. But anyway, so I do have, I do sell the DVDs. And I think a good way to watch it is on your high def TV. And this picture was a mistake, but it's also. 
<laughs> but, uh, you, you know, there's lots of plant life under there that's totally unknown to me. Plants that use air bubbles as tools. And this is all, like, right here in Vermont that you could go see for free. I mean, you just go to a fish and wildlife dock and jump in the water and go. You don't need to go to the Caribbean. And a lot of times what I film or what I see is really, I know we're all really messed up inside about Champ dying this winter because it froze over on him. But really, you know, you're the biggest thing in Lake Champlain, honestly. And they mostly, what I've, I try to capture some behaviors, matings and stuff, but a lot of times I just see fish reacting to me and they'll hang out with you, but a lot of times eventually they'll just move on. And I love to go to rivers once the, once the lakes get too algified and it's hard to see, but be amazed how many places in the lakes that you can't actually see. But rivers like the Trout River, so clear, so cool, and you see like a falls and it just looks like a hole. But when you dive in there, it's like this whole cathedral of awesomeness and the fish that you can approach them because they can't get away. They're stuck at the falls, and you can see huge trout. And then you don't even have to snorkel to see fish. Like, that's a sculp in there. You can just kind of wade around and stick your face in the water on certain creeks and stuff, and, and you'll be, there they are, sitting there. Stuff that when you're fishing or when people are fishing, they really want to know, like, what's under there? Oh, I wish I could see. What are they doing? Why aren't they biting? You can. Just stick your head under there and look. Uh, so, you know, and, the, and, and there's... This is filmed just by wading. Wading is bad because you kick up sediment, but that's just filmed on a pole. You know, uh, uh, you know. there's another example of just, you're always going to see minnows. And it's one of the closest encounters you can have with a wild animal in Vermont. And these guys, the pumpkin seed, they're the total winner of can you populate every body of water in Vermont. They're everywhere, this fish. And they're also really inquisitive. They'll come up to you as a big group, look you in the eye, and they have really cool colors, and they're interesting. Um, and that's it. <laughs>